We see seven votes now, so Jim Jordan is not going to become Speaker of the House on this ballot. I actually want to bring in Bob Comstock, who voted for Speaker as a member of, of Congress. And I want to ask you a couple of things, Barbara. We were Republican from Virginia. And I saw a Congress, a Republican congressman quoted today saying, uh, moderate Republicans always cave. It's a tale as old as time. That, that, that was the quote. And another uh, quote that there, normal Republicans never fight back and MAGA Republicans never back down. Is, is that what's happening? That eventually, whatever happens on this ballot or the next one, we now see eight against uh, Jordan. He's not going to get it on this ballot. Eventually, he will. Well, that really is the sad thing. I mean, that's you know, to see, you know, I'm happy certainly to see um, some of these moderates, you know, a lot of the New Yorkers who still might be redistricted. So, um, you know, they are in a precarious position. So you've had these Freedom Caucus guys, people like Matt Gates, who somebody told me was sitting there very smugly, you know, confident that they'll win, um, been mocking the moderates as they caved. You know, hey, we knew they'd always cave. You know, nobody cares. And you've had this consistent bullying you know, I mean, Jordan was short 81 votes going into the weekend and bullying, bullying, bullying by the, by Trump, by by, you know, Jim Jordan himself, by, you know, Sean Hannity and Fox News and by the whole MAGA empire. And this just gives you, I think, uh, what it would be like to have a speaker Jordan. It would be it wouldn't be legislating. It wouldn't be leading your team. It would be bullying your team. And that's not a leader. So I certainly hope these folks will hold because it will be very precarious for those 18 Biden seats. But worse, it'll be bad for the country. It'll be bad for someone, you know, two heartbeats, you know, away from the presidency to have somebody like this with no leadership capabilities and who will just be a pawn for Trump in whatever, you know, the MAGA world tells him to do. So do you think House Republicans could collapse into anarchy? <laughs> Again? No, I think you can just turn around and find, go back to a who's somebody here who can govern and genuinely bring people together, not bully. To, I mean, you know, Steve Scalise didn't go to the floor. He made a choice not to sell off body parts to try and get the speakership, <laughs> not to bully his colleagues, because he was somebody who worked with people. He was somebody who was a legislator. You know, and, and now you have Jim Jordan saying, we're just gonna stay here and we're gonna keep bullying you. Well, you know, they're flooding phones. You know, Mario Diaz-Balart said, you know, he, he's a tough Cuban, you know, he knows what bullies are like. You know, that's what he came, his family came escaping a bully. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're saying, that's not working on me. Uh, so I think uh, leadership by bullying is not leadership. And it made me very sad to see some of my former colleagues cave to that type of bullying. And I certainly hope, you know, now that we're up to nine, that you will see more of these, uh, you know, more of this in the second round, because there are some who aren't even beholden to Jordan in a second round. So maybe in a second round, there will be more who will say, adios, I didn't like the bullying in the first place. Let's go back to finding someone who will genuinely bring us together, not bully us. Jacobs. And, that, well, and I have to, to say, that speech yep. by, by Aguilar, by Representative Aguilar, most Republicans had to have been nodding their head because uh -huh. that what he said is not unlike what you would have heard when I was in the caucus and Jim Jacobs. Jordan was there. Most of those things that he said about Jim huh. Jordan hadn't been said by Republicans before. Well, that, you know what, then let me, let me follow up on that real quickly, if you don't mind. And Jay, I promise we're, we're gonna get to you. We're gonna get to everybody on our panel here. Oh, by the way, who are the, do we know what the cheers are for? Jeffrey's, yeah. Got it, Jeffrey, voted Jeffrey's himself. voted for himself. Um, but Barbara, to follow up, oh shoot, now I think I lost my train of thought. Oh yes, to follow up on what you said about, about Jim Jordan and the bullying, et cetera, your, your take on this. 
But you have all these, you have a number of Republicans saying that he's changed, that he's no longer that way, that he's actually working toward unity here, and he's no longer the, the you know, the flame flo thrower that we were talking about. Are, are you not buying that? Do you not believe that no, he's no, changed that, that his way? No, that is a joke. Again, those are people who are scared of him, scared of the Trump, scared of MAGA, scared of a primary opponent. There has been nothing about Jim Jordan that has changed. And look, at, and look at his Ohio. inability to lead. Those eight members Joyce who didn't Ohio. come through for Kevin McCarthy, if he had any leadership skill, Joyce he would have gotten Ohio. those eight members over, or at least Joyce. enough of them, for Kevin McCarthy. Yet he didn't. So this, you know, Jeffrey. he doesn't have that capability. Jeffrey. He's never passed a bill in 16 years. His, his hearings as judiciary chairman were a disaster, according to who? Jeffrey. Matt Gates. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. listen, this has not been somebody, yeah. as Pete Aguilar accurately said, Jordan. who's been a success Jeez. as a member of Congress. He's somebody who's just carried water Jeffrey. for Donald Trump. That's where Kelly he came to, you know, recognition. And before that, as John Boehner said, you know, he was a legislative terrorist who never cared about legislating. And he has not changed. He hasn't passed bills in the past few years. He's just, he just came to prominence because he, you know, worked with, he was the insurrectionist insider. He would have Ken Buck's vote if he would have just admitted that Trump lost. That's how tied at the hip he is to the election denying and to Donald Trump. He just, he, he wouldn't, to get that vote, he to, wouldn't just admit what we all know is true. That's right. that's how down right. the rabbit hole he is to conspiracies. Well, and, and as to, you pointed so out- Whatever uh, Trump would ask him to do, he would do. And he would, you saw him run away from the camera today when somebody asked him, why won't you just admit that Trump lost and he just ran away right. into the elevator because yeah, that's the, Jersey. he'll never admit that. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.